Emmy and her math teacher, after fleeing Hitler's Germany in the late 1930s, Albert Einstein found refuge in America. He purchased a quaint, old two-story house on a tree-lined street within walking distance of Princeton University. There the world's foremost mathematician entertained some of the most well-known scientific and politi political personalities of the age. He discussed with his noted guests the issues which intrigued his celebrated mind from physics to religion to human rights. Many of the great thoughts which have shaped our modern world were conceived behind the green shutters of that little modest house. But Einstein had another frequent visitor in his home. She was not a physicist or a world leader. She was a ten-year-old girl named Emmy. Emmy heard that a very kind man who knew a lot about mathematics had moved into her neighborhood. Since Emmy was having some difficulty with her fifth-grade arithmetic, she decided to visit the man down the block and see if he would help her with her problems. Einstein was willing, and he explained everything to her so that she could easily understand it. He also told her she was welcome to come and knock on his front door whenever she encountered a problem that was too difficult. A few weeks later, Emmy's mother learned from one of the neighbors that Emmy was often seen entering the house of the world-famous physicist. When she asked Emmy about it, the girl admitted it was so. Why, Emmy, the mother exclaimed. Professor Einstein is a very important man. His time is very valuable. He can't be bothered with the problems of a little schoolgirl. Then Emmy's mother rushed over to Einstein's house and knocked on the door. When Einstein answered, answered the door, she was so flustered at the sight of the famous lined face, the kindly eyes, and the familiar mane of unruly white hair, that she could only stammer incoherently. After a few moments, understanding dawned on Einstein's face. Ah! I think I understand. You're Emmy's mother, aren't you? Yes, she said, sighing in embarrassment, and I'm so sorry she's been coming over here and bothering you. Bothering me? No, he laughed. Why, when a child finds such joy in learning, then it is my joy to help her learn. Please don't stop Emmy from coming to me with her school problems. She is, is welcome in this house anytime. Aren't we also welcome to ask for God's help anytime? Don't we need to be like Emmy and ask for help? Don't we need to ask God's help with our problems? Don't we need to pray? Isn't God always willing to listen? Isn't God always helping us learn? Through prayer we become the willing students of God. Prayer honors God, acknowledges His being acknowledges his power, and secures his aid. Like Emmy, God's child can conquer anything by asking for his help. Like Emmy, shouldn't we go to the Master with our problems? Like Emmy, shouldn't we have faith in the Master's willingness to help us? Christians are the most powerful when they are on their knees and in humility asking for God's help.